So I've waited a week for my impressions on Microsoft Ignite and it was underwhelming. They seemed to announce lots of other stuff that they'd already announced. Seems like they've renamed quite a lot of things. They even joked that their marketing wasn't great on naming, but still that didn't stop them from naming things very similarly that are slightly different or paid versus free. So let's dive into all the stuff from Microsoft Ignite. So it seemed to create a lot more questions than answers a lot of the time. The first two keynotes, which who has two keynotes in an event, didn't really announce anything new. So the first one just had loads of infrastructure stuff, which I'm not that interested in, but obviously it is all needed to make all their services work. And then the second one that kind of like just kept announcing things that they've already announced either the previous week or a couple of weeks before. I'm not sure why they didn't just wait and just do all the announcements at Ignite. So it seemed like a bit of a bigger event than it was, at least my initial impressions. And because there's lots of confusion, I waited a week to see if there's going to be some clarifications coming out of some blog posts, which was useful to wait. But there's still some questions that we can dive into. So obviously, it's Copilot heavy. Microsoft kept using Copilot a lot. So Copilot in X, Copilot in Y, Copilot in Z. Broadly, there's Microsoft Copilot, which Microsoft have rebranded Bing Chat to just be Copilot or Microsoft Copilot. You get that for free. If you log in through your work account, it's protected as in the information doesn't go across the internet, so it's secure. But it doesn't pop up or use anything in your SharePoint, OneDrive, anything in your Microsoft 365 stuff. That's Microsoft 365 Copilot that you have to pay for, which is pointedly, there was no more news on the availability of that. So at the time of recording, you still have to be an enterprise customer and you have to have a minimum of 300 licenses. What Microsoft have done though, is rather just have Microsoft Copilot, the free one in Edge, they've made it available in Chrome and Safari. So then there's Microsoft 365 Copilot, which is the one that everyone's talking about, the one you have to pay $30 or 30 pounds per month per user on top of your existing Microsoft licenses to get, and that's where it shows up in pretty much every Microsoft app and can scan everything in the sort of Microsoft ecosystem, Microsoft 365 ecosystem, I should say. So alongside that, which I'm sure they've announced before, is Copilot Lab, which is where it shows you some prompts and helps you sort of use the Copilot that you're now paying for, which is useful. And then similarly named, which was a bit confusing as I was watching the keynotes, like I'm sure they just said that, but actually it was, it was a different name, is Copilot Studio, which is where you can either create entire like bespoke GPTs based on your own data, or you can link Microsoft Copilot into look at other data outside of Microsoft 365. So far, so good. But then comes a bit of confusion in that Microsoft have got other Copilots so they've got like Copilots for security, Copilots in Loop, Copilots in Teams, Copilots in blah, blah, blah. It's all Microsoft 365 Copilot. Then they've got role-specific Copilots, which have got Copilot for sales, which delves into Dynamics or Salesforce at the time of recording. But then they announced Copilot for service, but then the demo, they still showed it going into Salesforce. So then it's like, well, do you need a separate license for sales and for service? if you want Copilot to go into the sales bit of Salesforce and the service bit of Salesforce, because like I get it's role specific, but surely the benefit of having AI is that it picks data from wherever it is and serves, serves it back to you. So if you're a salesperson and you're about to go and visit a customer, you might want to know if they've got any outstanding service tickets rather than just the stuff that you've put in your sales bit of Salesforce, because it's like, well then, you know, you're going in and there's guys like, well, have you, haven't you sorted out my XYZ service ticket yet? And I'm like, oh, I didn't know because Copilot didn't tell me about that. So, yeah, if you want to do both of those, can you, do you need two other licenses? That wasn't clear or I think announced, but if I missed it, let me know in the comments below. Hi, I'm Gavin Jones at MeTime. And even if your organization doesn't know where to start with Microsoft at work to get the most out of it, that's what I help organizations do. So book a call using the link in the description below if you want to find out how we might be able to work together, help with discovery, what's possible, some recommendations and timeline about how we can manage the change. And if you need my help to manage that change and do training for you, then that's what we do as well. So click the link in the description below to book a call to have a chat, a good time for you. 
If you're an individual that just needs some more help on Microsoft, then we've got some options for you as well. So we've got some completely free training in the link below. We've also got a free trial of a paid training where you get live Q&A with me each week to go through anything that could help you with Microsoft at work. So if you're interested in that, click the link in the description below as well. And then Copilot Studio, to think to get the right terminology, Copilot Studio, where you can point Copilot into other bits of data. Well, surely you could just point it into Salesforce yourself without paying Microsoft an additional license to get Copilot for sales. But maybe that's more complicated than it looks. But also Copilot Studio, Although it looks really powerful, and one of the demos looked like, you know, you can get it to sort of help you create its own thing, which is a bit meta. So like, well, you're getting it to decide which branch to go down, and that looked pretty powerful. Contrast that with some other demos, it looked like you're sort of hard coding where it goes to find information and bringing back, in, bringing back the data. So those two things didn't seem to go together. One of the examples they showed was like, well, I'm asking Copilot about how much budget I've got left. And Copilot just came back and said, well, I don't I don't have that access to that data. So it's like, well, I'm not really sure when it would do that. Why didn't it try and help me get to that information? I'm not sure, which I'll come back in a sec. But presuming you can't find anything, it's then like, ah, you can go into Copilot Studio, use that same prompt to say, well, if someone asks about the budget, here's what they mean. And then sort of like a power automate flow. So we'll go into SAP, find this SAP table, and then return this data point back in this format and sort of, you know, making a copilot flow in Copilot Studio, but it looks a more like a power automate flow. And that seemed quite a lot more hard coded than normal copilot or some of the other things they showed. So I'm kind of like, well, when is it gonna go down that branch versus something else? which they did show a bit of, but it was a bit overlapping and confusing. And then I guess those other questions come out. I'm like, well, do you need to specifically tell it lots of different things, or is it going to sort of guess based on the, you know, the language and what language has been used? Even if it does understand your query and go down the right tree, it's like, well, say a salesperson wants to have information on their expenses budget. Is it going to be clever enough to pull that from some you know generic table even if it is is it gonna because in microsoft 365 copilot standalone it knows what permissions you've got to ask us access which data so it won't show you anything you don't already have permission to see if it's going into something third party it's like well is it using that user's credentials to go into that table to find out what they can see and if so at least in my career we never gave salespeople like access into like the budget bit of SAP because we don't want to touch it. If you want, if they want to see anything like that, we need to produce them a report. So they're not going directly into SAP. We're not training sales guys how to use SAP because it's frankly not that easy to use and they can do a lot of damage. So it's like, well, if they're then going to the table, it could still come back and say, well, I can't find anything because you haven't got permission to see it. Or it might show stuff to people that haven't got permission to see it, which I'm sure. Microsoft have thought of, but that wasn't clear. And then I guess the elephant in the room was that if you are doing stuff on budget, there's going to be loads of different, at least in my experience, loads of different Excel files in the Microsoft ecosystem that someone has got permission to see. So it might be on their own OneDrive, it might be in SharePoint, could be anywhere to do with budget. So like, well, how is Copilot going to find the right information? Is it going to go and scout, like bring you stuff back from the, the spreadsheets, I'm, you know, I'm sure it's quite clever in trying to find the latest one, but it might find one that's nothing to do with what you've asked. How is it going to pull from SAP and the information from Excel? And it does all the citation stuff, so you could see where it's finding information, but that wasn't particularly clear. I'm not sure how it's going to work, so it'd be good to get a hands on it and have a play. Yeah, not sure. I mean, it's a lot really powerful, so it's good that it's, they're giving people access to go and create their own and harness that power. But I guess with great power comes great responsibility. It could be producing stuff back that you're not really intended or some of the, like I would say, with low code, it's not load logic. You like, you'd still need quite a lot of logic and think like a coder to level. Actually, I'm going to go into this table. I'm going to bring this data back. I'm going to show it in this way. I need to like do another step to, you know, all the stuff that a, co a coder would think is really easy. 
but like someone you know that's a bit more like an end user would be like well i just want to connect it to there to give me the data back that seems like if they made something that did that that would be uh, a lot easier to, to sort out. So along with lots of Copilot stuff, there was lots of renaming going on, which was uh, confusing to follow, because I guess, like I said in the previous video, Microsoft announced loads of stuff that the previous named thing already did, as if it's new, rather than just saying, yeah, we we'll rename this to that. Cool, got it. And so they announced SharePoint Premium as if it was a brand new thing. And then it turns out that actually it's SharePoint Syntax, which was terribly named and marketed. But then that was really confusing with the licensing because SharePoint Syntax is predominantly pay-as-you-go. And, and then SharePoint Premium was like bundling in some other bits of services that seemed like it was more fit for like a, a plan. So for example, SharePoint Premium can translate stream videos, transcripts into other languages, which again, sort of overlaps with stream not really being a thing anymore. It's all built on SharePoint. But then like the syntax bits that are put in SharePoint Premium are still pay as you go. So it's like, well, some bits are a plan which might not be that useful and some bits and then pay as you go. It seemed to be a cohesive thing to market that is premium. But like I've said on the channel before, I was quite skeptical about Viva being the place that Microsoft go to make more money. Just call it Viva and you can charge an additional license, even though it seems like that should fit into Microsoft 365. Now I've got Copilot, which is different. You can see, yep, yeah, that's different. I need to pay extra for that. Now they're doing lots of different premium things. They've got SharePoint Premium, which I've mentioned. One thing I'll do another video on, which I'm quite excited about, which I think was the best announcement at Ignite actually, was the new planner. But along with the new planner becomes planner premium. So Microsoft have got to do planner and project on the web and all called it planner, but project on the web bits are premium. There's one bit, which I'll go into the next video in a bit more detail, that the main reason people don't use Planner, at least for like business critical work, is that people could move stuff around, complete other people's tasks, and you can't go back and see what's happened. So you'd like return to the board like, ah, oh, what's happened? People have just completely messed this up. Who's done that? And there's no way to find out. So as part of the new Planner, you can go and see what's happened to those. But it's not, I guess, with having a split tier of like free and paid, it's not clear if that's just in the paid bit. And I'm hoping it is, because that'll stop people leaving Microsoft, at least in the clients I work with, it's going to click up Monday.com, Trello, you know, a third party tool that actually does what they want it to do. And that's the main one that's like just massively missing in the Microsoft ecosystem. And, uh, but yeah, all the stuff that they announced in, in Planner looks cool. They sort of mentioned that to-do's rolling into Planner, but then didn't really mention anything about to-do after that. Like, when's it going? How are you going to migrate? what's it going to look like. Um, but yeah, basically you can create personal plans that you can view as a list or as a board view. So just made sense to, for Microsoft to do that with all the competition in click up on monday.com and just like, I don't care if it's a board or a list. I just want to see it how I want to see it. I don't care if it's personal or shared. It's, yeah, it's really good that Microsoft are doing this. But again, there's just a bit of confusion over some of the licensing and what's in, what's out, which hopefully will be, get cleared up over the coming weeks and months before that comes out. Clipchamp is now available in your commercial login. So in your three, your nine dot waffle menu in Microsoft 365, you can see Clipchamp there right now if you've got a work account. And that's Microsoft's video editor that they acquired and really useful for doing light video editing. It now contains AI. So like some other video editors, it's scan you know, in the transcript, you can edit using the text. So if you can go through and edit out all your ums and ahs. I think automatically, and then you can also edit by text. If you said something and you just want to chop that out, you just delete the text and it deletes that cuts that bit of video out for you. So really useful for business because that's pretty much all the editing you're going to want to do. And then along with the premiumization of everything, obviously you can get Clipchamp Premium, which gets you 4K export and stuff like that. And I can't see many business users needing that. So it's good that most stuff is for free. And if you need a couple of licenses for people that need a little bit more, then that seems quite cheap to, to put in. And then the last bit of premium is Teams Premium, obviously, which Microsoft clarified a little bit in what's overlapping with Copilot. So the intelligent recap was the most obvious unanswered question before Ignite. It's like, well, what's going to happen with intelligent recap and Copilot? Because you could just ask Copilot to recap the meeting for you. So it seems strange that you need 
Teams Premium on top of Copilot to do that. And Microsoft clarified that, yeah, if you've got Copilot, you get Teams Premium. Uh, if you get Teams Intelligent Recap, should say, it's not so many terminology things. And if you've got Teams Premium, you still get the Intelligent Recap, but you can't ask Copilot anything else about that recap or about the meeting, which kind of makes sense. Still unclear about whether Teams Premium is using the Copilot infrastructure to generate the summary and tasks. Because at least from the demos, without having played with the Copilot yet, the Intelligent Recap seems to be worse than what they've showed Copilot can do. So if you know that, let me know in the comments below. But, um, but yeah, seems like that's a, a bit of overlap, but it was nice to clarify that you do get the Intelligent Recap whether you've got Copilot or Teams Premium. And then there were lots of other things that kind of start to overlap. So they showed image generation in a Teams post in a channel banner that only comes with Teams Premium, but also comes with Copilot. But you could do that in Edge now for free using Microsoft Copilot, FKA, Bing Chat anyway, because it's got integration with Dali 3, I think now, or Microsoft Designer, which also plugs into the sidebar of Edge, which you can use it to generate images. So you could just generate an image and then put it into Teams. But if you want to generate it, Ross, you're doing a banner, then you have to pay either Teams Premium or Copilot, which is like, well, that's not like a big thing. Just make it part of Teams, which you can already do it free somewhere else anyway. So that seemed a bit nitpickety and uh, nitpickety, nitpicky. And also technically really cool is that rather than blurring a background or having a completely different background, you can have your existing background, but use AI to like clear it up, clean it up, make it look more professional or some other you know, stock AI things that you can do. So like they showed a person with like messy boxes on the background of a real life background and it just sort of cleaned those up for her. So that looked pretty technically cool. Am I like to use it more than once to see what it does? Probably not. I'm not a big background person anyway in my meetings. Don't mind people seeing the background and see it on YouTube anyway. And so yeah, I'm not going to like to use it much. I'm like to recommend it to clients very often. Probably not. But if you're really paying for stuff and it's there, then yeah, it looks pretty cool. So like I say, we'll have a separate video on all the new stuff in Planner and all the stuff on Stream and ClipChamp. We'll have separate videos on those. So if you're not subscribed, click the subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when they come out. We've got new videos coming out at least every Tuesday. And if you like the video, remember to give it a thumbs up before you go. And thanks for watching so far. We'll see you in the next one.